Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to create a health bar and a script to control it. Let's begin. So, in order to make our health bar, we're going to use sprite renderers with a white pixel that we can stretch and tint. Let's begin by making an empty game object. And we're going to name this health bar. So this will be the container for our bar. Now inside, the first thing we need, let's make another empty game object, and this one is going to be for the background. And for the background, let's leave it at 00, zero and we're going to add a sprite renderer. So the sprite renderer doesn't actually show anything until you actually apply a sprite, so let's drag a simple white pixel in there so that we can visualize our rectangle. Okay, like that. We can view the texture import settings in here, and as you can see, this is literally just a one by one white pixel, and it has pixels per unit of one. This is very useful when you want to display a rectangle using a sprite renderer. So in here, since this is our background, let's tint it in a dark gray, like that, okay. And for the sorting order, it really depends on how your game is set up, but for now, let's leave it on the default and put it at 100. All right, so that's our background working perfectly. Now let's make the actual bar. So we're going to set up the bar in such a way that we can easily modify the scale to be able to use a normalized value. So let's go up here and make another empty game object and name this bar. Now for this game object, we're going to leave it completely empty. You will see why. The purpose of this game object is simply as an anchor for the actual sprite. So inside this game object, let's make another game object. And this one, let's name it bar sprite. Now for this one, let's add a sprite render, drag the white pixel and put the same size as the background sprite. For the sorting order, let's put it at 110 so that it shows up on top of the background. So right now it is occupying the exact same space as the background. However, we're going to shift this to the right side. So put it at 20 so that it is shifted to the right on half of its size. Now, the reason why we're doing this is so that we can now go into the bar in here and we can easily modify the X value and it will correctly pivot from the left side to the right. All we need to do here is go to the left by half of our size and as you can see, it is now shipped to the left. And this way, if we give it a scale of zero, you can see that it is an empty bar. If we give it one, it is full. So all we need in our code is to convert whatever health values we are using into a normalized value and we can easily apply it to our bar. All right, so that's a simple bar. Now for an optional thing, let's add a border. So let's duplicate the background, call it border, and let's drag it up there to keep things nice and organized. And for the order layer, let's put it at 90 so it is behind the background, put it in black and increase the size by a little bit. So there you go, we got a nice little border behind our bar and we can go into our bar game object, modify the X scale and as you can see it works perfectly as we want. Okay, great. Now one last thing, change the bar sprite to red so that this actually does represent a health bar. All right, so that's our bar completely set up in the editor. You can view in the game window, yep, that's a health bar right there. All right, so now let's make a script to control our bar through code. So in our folder, our scripts folder, let's make a new C Sharp script and name it health bar. We're going to drag this script into our main health bar game object, just like that. Now inside our script, let's begin by grabbing a reference to the bar transform. So in here, transform bar equals transform.find our bar. And just for testing, let's change the bar in here. So do bar.local scale equals new vector three, and we're going to put it on 0.4 and 1F. So the bar should be displaying as 40% filled. Let's see. And yep, there you go, you can see the bar and it is 40% filled. Okay, great. Now let's make a function for modifying the size of our bar. First, let's store the transform as a member variable. So up here, a transform for our bar, and we're going to set it in there. Okay, great. Let's get rid of the update for now and make the start private to keep our code nice and clean. Now let's make a public void set size and inside we're going to receive a float for the size normalized. And all we're going to do in here is set the bar dot local scale to a new vector three with the size normalized and one F. 
So the size that we're receiving here will be between zero and one, and we apply it to our bar as previously. So now for testing, let's create a basic game handler script. So let's make in our script, create a new C-sharp script, name it game handler. This is a simple script so that we can run things outside of our health bar. So let's drag it onto this game object in here. And inside the game handler, we're going to, first of all, require a reference to our health bar. Health bar, and let's make this a serialized field. And once we get our health bar, let's set the health bar dot set size to, let's say, 0.4i. Now in the editor, let's drag the health bar into our health bar reference. All right, so there you go. The health bar is now correctly 40% filmed as we set in the game handler. So now let's go back to the game handler and let's make a little animation to constantly lower our health bar size. So for that, let's go in here and I'm going to use a function periodic, which is part of the code monkey utilities, codemonkey.utils, which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. Now the function periodic simply creates a function that is triggered every certain amount of time. So every, let's say, 30 milliseconds, we're going to execute this function in here. And now for that function, let's make a float health equals 1f, so start our health completely full. And here, if the health, if it is bigger than 0f, then let's reduce the health by 0.01f and set the health bar dot set size to our health. All right. So this simple script should be reducing this health amount and constantly setting the size of the health bar. So the health bar should be constantly going lower. Yep, as you can see, the bar is constantly going lower until zero. Okay, great. So we can easily now modify the size of our health bar. Now let's go in our health bar and make another function for setting the bar color. So let's make here public void set color. And inside we're going to receive a color object and we're simply going to go into the bar dot find our bar sprite. On the bar sprite, let's get the sprite renderer component. And in there, we simply set the color to this color. So just for testing, let's go in the game handler down here and let's set the health bar dot set color to let's say color dot white. So let's see if our bar is now white. Yep, there you go, we now have a white bar, okay. And now in here in our little animation, Let's make the bar flash when it is too low. So in here, let's do if health, if it is under 0.3F, so if we have under 30% health, under 30% health, let us flash in in white, but only sometimes. So let's do if health multiplied by 100F, remainder of three equals zero, then set as white, else let's set as red. All right, so in here, multiplying our health by 100 gives me a value between zero and 100. And doing the remainder of the division by three means that it will return zero only on every multiple of three. So on three, six, nine, etc. And if it is a multiple of three, then we set it as white. If not, then we set it as red. So this is just a simple basic animation to see if our set color is working correctly. So our bar should be flashing white whenever it is under 30% health. So let's see that. All right, so here's our little bar, and when it gets under 30, yep, it starts flashing. Okay, so we can easily set up the size of this bar, and we can also modify the color. Great. So there you have it. We created a health bar in the editor and made a script to control it through code. We can easily modify it to display any value that we want. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time.